are at last with the high flyer. We've had it masked off for, well, too long. <laughs> Let's just say that. Now, I'm going to take this opportunity while it's not really windy. Yeah, the sun, the sun's not going to be out much longer. Temperature's fine. I got it wiped off with a damp cloth. That's dry. And then I just hit it with the duster. So, I'm going to hit it with, I decided on the Gloss Apple Red. I got it warmed up in warm water. It's spraying good. Got it all shaken up. I'm just going to kind of go like this and I'm not going to try to hit the fins. I'm just going to, I'm working on the body tube, right? So here we go. It's a nice bright red. That's what I was hoping for. I like that red. That's nice. No runs, no runs. Yeah, we got a little bit of the tube spiral showing through right there. But I like that red, wow. Looks good, even with the gray primer. It's not like, it's not too bright, it's just, but it's just vivid. Okay. You know what? I don't think we have any runs. little dusted there but you know what I'll hit it with the next coat I'll make sure to hit those spots first and here too got a little light right there I think it's good though I think we're all right I think we're doing something right yeah I'm satisfied with that I like that color cool see y'all in a minute so we didn't even hit the aft end at all some light areas right there but we'll get that here in the next coat all right let's start from this end this time if it does leak through it's not a super big deal I'm actually gonna I think I'm just gonna go this this pattern this time this direction Getting any runs? No, I don't think so, not yet. All right, good, good, good. thick on the aft end there but I think it's fine it didn't drip or puddle up it did go on nice and shiny it's actually how I want it but this is the second coat I got the aft end hit now. Still missing a little spot, but I don't want to hit it just yet because I don't want to. I want to. I want to press my luck. But that did go on pretty darn good. Before we do anything else, though, yeah, we got to wait a week. But I'm gonna wait about probably. 45 or so minutes because it's not super hot maybe even just 30 minutes and I'm gonna peel the paint off and see if we actually hit the uh, fins at all and if we did so what so I'm guessing also by the way 
that if we're gonna when we paint the fins we're gonna have to wait a week regardless because this will be kind of that tacky not quite dry not cured -ness until a couple days from now at least two days at a minimum so before we wanted to paint the the fins we got to let it dry somewhat because i'm pretty sure if i was to put the masking tape on it might just peel up the the red paint so i'm not exactly sure what the magic formula is for that but that's what i'm thinking i'm gonna do okay come back to you in about 10 or so minutes i don't know if my lines are going to be the cleanest I mean, i'm sure there's a million better ways of doing this i'm not the ba best masker but i couldn't really find anything on exactly how to mask off fins i might not have had to mask them off yet put the light coat down then the dark coat then mask it off the body yeah we'll see we'll see so i'm actually going to hit this one more time just to make sure that gets hit and but i'm actually going to start from this end don't want any runs really I'm trying to avoid the runs as much as I can okay that looks like a nice aft end to me okay final coat here we go can still warm still all shaking up all right let's do this And on the launch lugs, huh? Dude, that's gonna be it. It's got a nice shine to it. Yeah, there's still some of that dusting here and there. Yeah, I gotta perfect what's going on with that. So I don't really know what the excuse is for that right now. There's like no wind. I'm just not close enough or whatever it might be. It might be a slight couple runs right there. Let me just try this. One more screw up, right? So that went on pretty wet. That went shiny, but everything around it didn't. So I'm done. I'm not going to touch it no more. I think I'm liking what we're working with. I'll consider this a success. Pretty darn good, at least for me. So, I don't think we really missed any spots. So what, the launch lugs didn't get anything in them on the insides, but who cares, right? I think it's fine. This is 100% better than anything really that I've ever painted. I'm just gonna be concerned with how the lines are here. So, especially here, cause this kinda came undone. So it might not have got up in there. Maybe we'll figure out a way to t touch it up. So I'm going to wait about 30 minutes and I'm going to peel this back while it's still somewhat wet but not completely dry. And I'm not exactly sure to peel it this way or peel it that way. Peel it away from the paint or peel it towards the paint. I'm thinking it's a way to kind of break it. Alright, time for the moment of truth. There should have been plenty of time for it to kind of dry up a little bit but not completely dry which I'm guessing what you're supposed to do Doesn't seem wet still. My 
My lines are probably going to be hideous. I'd be really surprised if this came out immaculate. Paint's coming off pretty good though. Or the tape, not the paint. <laughs> we don't want that to come off. Okay. So, I wonder if I can just kind of grab it like that. Just nice and easy. Just nice and easy, nice and easy. So far that looks pretty darn clean. Might be a rocket painter, guys. Might actually have done something okay. So I'm peeling it. You see the direction I'm pulling it, and it's working. pretty clean at least for me well, let's see about this one I'm trying to get you guys a decent angle here so I might have might have did this the right way. At least I might have had some, somewhat of an idea how to do this. I don't think we got any bleed through through the, through the plastic, which was was a concern of mine. It might somehow just get through. Maybe like a little hole somewhere, but you know, we weren't trying to paint the fins at all. It's just the tube. That's all we wanted. Okay, this is coming off. Okay. So we're taking off the glove. Right? It's kind of like taking off the glove. Okay. Now we're down to the green on this one. Let's see. Pull it from this corner. Oh wow. I really I really was not expecting it to be this clean. But maybe I should shut up so I don't jinx it. Went a little too fast right there, but it's still pretty darn clean. I mean, gosh, y'all should be proud of me for this. I mean, if y'all did this, y'all getting it clean too, then freaking good job. Start from the back again, actually. Start from over here again. I'm not exactly sure how long I can or have to wait until I can mask off the body to do the fins. The real trick is working with the water slide decal because I've never actually really done that. Not 100% immaculate because right here it's a little bit jagged, but that's like pff, nothing. 
So this right here is questionable. Let's see, because that started to come undone on me. To me, so far, fins come out good after this. This is an award finning. This is an award winning finish for me at least. And I will feel pretty darn confident in painting rockets. But I, sh I showed you pretty much how I did it, how I did the mask. Let's... I'll have to do some cutting. Actually, I'm going to come back to you guys. Okay, I found where to go. I had to peel it from the other side. Okay. I think this is actually the first one I did. And I did this one off camera. Any little jaggies might get covered up by the black paint, I'm hoping. Like Merry Christmas, all red, and green, a little bit of blue clear. It's like opening up a Christmas present. Huh? If there was a screwed up spot, it's going to be right here. But we might be in the clear. Right here, if it's screwed up. We didn't get any bleed through. So, frog tape, you did it. You did what you're supposed to do. Get kind of stuck right there. It kind of fuses together if you really get them together. careful with this, I just don't want it to rip off on me by an accident, so there we go, just take our time, just take our time, and just, and this, this, this paint, this tape's been on here for like a week and a half, I was also kind of concerned, like, will it kind of fuse to the primer, and I don't think it did, guys, look at that. Our body tube and our fins so far. Look at that. Be almost an interesting color, but I'm gonna paint them black. And then we gotta put the decals on, attach the shot cord to the nose cone, and this is a oh, and the retainer. Don't forget the retainer. I was JB welding that. Definitely gonna need a retainer unless we're gonna friction fit, but I'm not. This rocket is pretty much done. Awesome, I'm satisfied. Back on the high flyer. Just about done with this thing. All right, so I got most of this masked off. And I don't know if you guys can see that. I've got a little bit of red showing. So I'm thinking the way I'm gonna start masking off for this type of design is that I will go up a little bit on the fin with the when I mask it off from now on because it'll overlap. Now what I'm fearful of is that a little bit of the gray primer is going to be showing after I put on the black so that's why I do have a little bit of the red showing so yeah if I was to put it probably up dang well you get it probably like right up there Like right up in there just probably like maybe like an eighth of an inch I would have that overlap which I didn't do with this go around and I got the launch logs and I'm gonna put some blue tape over this I may even seal it up with some plastic just to make sure on this side I don't really have so much red showing so I'm thinking it might have some gray primer show and if it does oh well it might look kind of neat or maybe I'd be able to touch it up at a, at a later date. So I'm going to 
put a a ring around the body tube here after I get this done and then I'm gonna put um, some plastic over the rest of the body tube and this has been about three days later so I've already peeled this up a few times and it's not taking the paint with it okay I'm going to kind of show you how I've been doing this, whether it's the right way or the wrong way. Probably, you know how we do around here. So I get about, probably about that length. Just tear it off. And I just kind of lay it on there. I kind of favor this edge and kind of pull it tight. I kind of lay it on there now. I don't want it too far up on the fin. This is probably why when you mask you want that little bit of lip. That way you don't have like a really small crack of primer showing so the way that I did it probably was the wrong way I probably did want to hit some of this red on the fin here so I'm just going to kind of smooth this out I'm going to curl this over this right here is going to be completely covered I know that there's still some stuff showing there but it's a work in progress I've been going at it now for about 20 minutes doing the other fins so I'm just showing you at least this part. Maybe we can get this painted today. See, so I still got the nose cone all nice and painted. I just got it in there like that for counterweight. And it's satisfyingly smooth. So I don't think painting the shoulder is a really bad idea for the most part. So we got some showing and some not showing with the red, that red line. So it might be like a little bit of gray here and there. Whatever at this point. Live and learn. Okay? We're going to eat what we got. Okay, so I got the last piece of tape on. A little bit of the red showing. So I got mostly here. Some of it's not really showing here. Yep, that's the way I'm going to start doing. I'm going to have that red go up on the shoulder or the body tube paint. Whenever I got to paint fins a different color, that's what I'm going to start doing. And you should too. Probably just make it a lot easier on you so you don't have any lines of primer showing up through. Just put the light coat down first and then put the uh, the lighter color down first and then put the darker color on. So, Alright, so now we're going to start, probably put some here. So i got to start doing something for this. So, Okay, so I figured to get kind of like the point of the fins... I'd kind of put the tape at like an angle. Probably not exact. But it should be okay. You know, my painting videos are not a master class in this. It's just showing you, I guess, what I'm doing and what results I get. <laughs> I guess that's my disclaimer. So, I mean, we did good on the body tube. So maybe we'll get away with getting the, the fins how we want them. All right, so I got this wrapped up with some of this type right here of this plastic mask, and it came with its own tape, so I didn't even have to blue, worry about the blue yet. I got all these done. They're probably going to be misshapen a little bit. They're not going to be uniform, I know that for a fact. But All right, so then I put a green ring a green tape around and I put this on top and I wrapped it around a few times so now we got basically like a newspaper going on right here and I'm, I mean I'm not gonna be focusing down here too much but you still never know where that paint's gonna go so I'm just gonna twist this over I'm just gonna shove it down in there how about that yeah see there I think I think it'll be all right this right here should still all be. I could probably put some tape here just for a little bit of extra insurance, but you know what? 
I'm going to be focusing most of everything down here. So now I just got to um, make sure that these are all sealed. I mean, I'm going to be coming at the, the spray like this, just literally, and then and then probably leave it there, and then maybe turn it, and then so. Hmm. I don't want really the aft end to be black. I want that to stay red. So I'm going to get all this covered up a little bit better, and I'll see you when it's time to paint. I'm thinking. Okay. So the real question is, how am I going to put on the rotisserie if that's plugged up and that's plugged up? thinking maybe I'll put on some I actually put on some gloves and just hold it like this and just I'll probably just hold it in my hand like that maybe I'll get a black hand we'll see got it all sealed up as best I can got all this with the lines I mean the, the way that I put the tape on I can't even really tell where the lines are I just kind of had to feel out what felt like the lines of the rocket so it might not be a hundred percent straight but I think this is what we're going to be working with. I'm going to get these wiped off, dusted off. And <laughs> between coats, I don't know. Maybe I'll just, uh, if I can set this down somewhere, uh, if I'm holding it in my hand, um, maybe I'll just walk around. Because it looks kind of like a mace right now. <laughs> so maybe I'll just walk around my backyard and get the law caught on me. Oh, he's going crazy. We knew it. Be on the 6 o'clock news, but paint time there's nothing on the radar but it is looking a little overcast still pretty warm out I got this set up like this because you know what how am I gonna film this unless I put it actually on the tripod and hold that in one hand and spray it in the other hand I don't have three hands so I went ahead and did this I got some old painter masking paper in there shoved up in there all the way through it's a long dowel rod all the way through here and if it starts sliding which I hope it don't I should be able to rotate it from here. I think we'll be fine. All right, hands warmed up. We're all shook up. Definitely want to watch the edges. It's blown off, wiped off, all that good stuff. So this is it. Now or never, right? So I'm thinking maybe I can kind of come this way and maybe try to hit the edge going around. But, all right. Got that back edge. Pretty good so far. I don't think I don't think I've seen runs come back I'll come back to that and I'll hide it on the second coat seeing a little bit of the wood grain nothing too major if I hit it thick enough it won't be so bad paint have to go to go to the market So you ain't gonna believe this. That dent right there came from the duster. These right here are the biggest load of crap because this thing keeps flying off. I was actually able to find it, but it actually shot off, boom, bounced right off, put a dent right in it. Just off camera right before I started recording when I was dusting it off. <sighs> wow. And they, and those and that brand right there, they keep flying right off I've got a couple cans that are missing the, the tube I might just start not using them 
But anyways, I think this coat is looking pretty good. All right, we'll come back here in about 10 minutes or so, maybe not even that long. And then that's it. We'll get another coat on there. All right, coat number two. Definitely want to hit this right here. So far, so good. I'm not seeing any runs. Try and come from this angle. It's where I'm not seeing anything that's shiny. No runs yet. I think I'm doing something right. Keep it shaking, keep it shaking, all right. Now, I only waited, to be honest, about five minutes. So, I'm thinking, thinking that's actually not a bad idea. And it's going on pretty darn shiny. All right, wait, last coat, and then I gotta get some more black spray paint because this, this is definitely getting low. Last coat. Let's do this. I'm going to go back this way. See anything looking out of the ordinary? Okay, I think we're so far we're run free. My edges are looking good. No runs. That right there. Mm. That's okay. It's like it's not going to get dinged up when it flies, right? Definitely not a shelf queen, for sure. Oh, we're done already? Dang. Why not go one more time the wrong way, right? It's supposed to go in the same direction, right? Well, I guess I'm just the kind of guy that goes against the grain. Almost doing a fourth coat. Uh oh. What's he doing doing a fourth coat? He's lost his mind. Now it's going to be ruined, probably. Probably. I'm adding all this extra weight on there. I'm not going to get an altitude record with this. Spun on me, will you? Spin on me, will you? It spun on me. No, I want you to point just like this. Wow. Fighting with me, are you? Maybe it's trying to tell me something. Like, don't put any more paint on it. But I am done. These fins are done. Definitely done. They're looking shiny. Okay. Not too bad. Could be worse. That's what touch-ups for, right? Just depends on what you want to do. 
how perfect you want it to be. Okay, I'm gonna let it dry for about, I don't know, another 30 or so minutes, and then I'm gonna take the mask off. Okay, here's the moment of truth. It's been, I don't know, about 30 minutes. To what we're working with here, what kind of damage. Still a little sticky. Maybe I shouldn't touch that. Maybe, just maybe, I should be wearing gloves. Be an interesting color green and black you don't always have to follow the old actual paint scheme that comes with the rocket or suggested for the rocket that's the great thing about rocketry you can make up your own designs paint schemes Half thinking just to leave this on just to kind of, but I do have to kind of take it off to take some of that tape off. These lines probably will not be all that. And of course, the shock cord has to come out, but that's okay. Oh, don't touch the paint. I saw that coming. The only thing, the way I painted it, or the way I taped it, is like I gotta, it's kind of like a puzzle to find what I taped. What I didn't. I'm trying to let that tape touch the fins because they're still, I don't know. Somewhat wet, but not really wet. Some of the paints, maybe that was in the thicker areas on the paint was still a little wet though. I guess I could start from here maybe. Start taking these pieces off. Yeah, that's going to be... I don't know. That might be alright. A little easier taking off than it was putting on. Just an experiment, right? Let's see what we can and can't get away with. I know that this paint job wasn't going to be flawless. Damn it. That's what I was not hoping for. I went too far. So you can still see some of the primer. But you know what? I got an idea how to fix all that. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Okay. And that could probably all be avoided by doing what I was suggesting, and that's not doing it how I did it and putting it all the way down to the body tube like how we masked off the fins to paint the body tube should have had a little bit of a red lip going up the fins that frog tape does work pretty darn good I have to say I'm pretty satisfied with that
a little bit of jaggies here and there if I didn't have it pressed down enough when I did paint the fins of course the tape wasn't a hundred percent down to the micron straight onto the fins so that's what happens when you give it a little bit of a lip going up the fin you have to be exact down to the micron <laughs> Frog tape is not peeling up what was already there, so that's a good thing. And it's okay. I'm missing a little bit right there. That came out, the other two came out great. It's not so, not so much. I need to zoom out on you. Let's see. Have been better, but the other two came out pretty darn good. And of course, we got the primer line, which is what I was fearful of. Ve I mean, very faint here, non existent here. This side got it real good. This right here is good. This is great. I mean, guys, I gotta tell you, I mean. This is one of the better paint jobs I've ever done. So, and then of course there's the tip of the fins. They're not even at all. I did absolutely no, that was probably the best looking one, but I did no math. <laughs> I did no calculations, just eyeballed it. That's what I get. There's probably a hundred million way better ways to do it, but that's the results I got, and that's probably what you were expecting. So, hey, we'll get all this touched up, but next, retainer time. All right, let's get the retainer put on this high flyer. I've been putting this off for, for too long. I've got the JB Weld mixed. 50-50, 1-1, what do you call it. I went ahead and sanded this with 200, uh, 220 grit, this kind right here. And I need to go ahead and hit the retainer real quick with some 220 just to rough it up to help it bond. I'm going to hit it here. Probably could have ripped me off a smaller piece, but maybe I... A little just a little bit no no hold up we have to go too crazy with it okay i didn't have to make that much but that's about how it came out of the tube so it's got i think i think i think it's got that gray color because you know it comes out white and black for the hardener and the resin itself so i think i think that's jb weld gray i consider that jb weld gray so I'm thinking I'm just going to go ahead and put it on here a 30 minute epoxy guarantee would have been just fine but I want to get in the habit of using JB Weld because JB Weld has that heat resistance as well and this is just regular old JB Weld probably the most common type probably good enough and I'll probably give a little spin when I put it on there okay here we go as long as we don't get any on the threads we're good 
as long as we're sitting flush. I'll probably give that about 24 hours or so to dry. I still got to put the decals on. Okay, and look at here. So we already got that. This is just an E12. So I think we're good. And definitely give this at least 24 hours before we fly. I didn't get none on the threads. I think we're good. how far it's going to be sticking out when I actually got it loaded. Still should be fine though. Still spinning because obviously it's not dry yet. But There it is. Well, back to this. We already got two on there. And those came out okay. Water slide decals. Interesting. They went on pretty decent. No real issues. I did, and if probably if I didn't point it out to you, if I didn't point it out to you, see that little tick on the corner right there? Yeah. That's the way that I peeled it off, slid it off the backing, because that's how water slide decals go, which will be going over here shortly. I, um, of course, cut some of them out already, but I'm going to show you how I've been cutting them out. So first thing when you start <clears throat> cutting out decals, you always want to make sure you got your fresh, brand new X-Acto blade. And you've been doing a lot of cutting on other things. You want these brand new, ready to go. Because you want your decals as straight as possible, clean as possible. Okay, this, you know, is, it came in a square sheet. I showed it at the very beginning of the build video. Um, I've, of course, cut that out. Got the two little SDs logos, which are supposed to go on the rocket, I guess, wherever you want to put them. And what I've been doing is taking a ruler and this is a wood ruler but it has a metal edge it's like one of these old school school type rulers and I but I also have this metal one here triangular style ruler and what I do and what you what you want to do is you want to cut the as l much blue out as possible you want it to be as flush as possible because I didn't on those first two decals that I put on there and they just were not fitting on the shape of the fins at the uh, the, the, um, the trailing edge. Where it sits on the base of the trailing edge, it just was not fitting correctly. So, we definitely don't want too much excess. So, when you do the decals, you, know, you, can, you can line it up like this until you start seeing nothing. Or you can do it like this. It's where you just bring it right up to the gray. And then I'm going to spread my fingers out like this. Okay. And now when I take the razor. Okay. I'm going to start all the way here. And, okay, it's on a cutting mat. I might cut my cutting mat up a little bit, but you know, cut my cutting mat? No, no. That's what it's for. So I also have it kind of at a, maybe like a slight angle. Maybe not straight down like this. A slight angle. Because I'm, I'm kind of favoring, kind of t going towards that metal ruler. And I'm using f pretty decent pressure. Um, I don't know. Maybe a couple pounds. And I'm just going to try and do this in one slick motion 
Ooh, we're not starting out too slick. Ooh, this might be a blooper. And of course, you don't want to slip and slice your thumb if you're holding it like this. Okay, I went into the decal a little bit. Is that the end of the world? I don't think so. It's going to happen. But I cut that nice and straight. A little bit of, little bit of not so nice right here. But I did get it nice and straight. Now let's try. If you let's say you got one that's handy like this, or maybe just a straight up flat aluminum one. And also notice that these are symmetrically mirrored, so they do matter what um, side they go on of the fins. But I'm going to start here because I don't want to slit this and it's going to, if I start here, it's going to just pull off and give me issues. So I want to kind of start here where they're still a little bit attached. And I can clean that up. But I think I got that lined up pretty good, nice and flush. I usually don't use this ruler, but I'm going to try it anyways. And it's actually a little bit wider, maybe a little bit safer. And it might sit actually a little bit flatter. So maybe I will start using this one more. Because this is actually going pretty good. Okay, I did get a little bit of blue. That's okay. Because if you do that, all that blue is going to be clear. It's not going to be blue. So if you do get a little bit, it's still not the end of the world. And you can still attempt... I might even go this way. So let's just see if I can go this way. All right? No, I did cut all the way there to the edge. So then if I cut into it a little bit, it might be a little thinner. Okay. Let's see if we really tear this up and make this horrible. But I'm just showing you this. Maybe this is a do or do not. This guy's being a moron. I'll never watch another one of his videos. But look, I did clean that up a little bit. And I'm, as of right now, I already know that this is going to go on just fine. So then you have this final edge. So now I'm going to cut into here. And of course, the actual logo itself was just, you know, simply cutting it square. You could probably cut it out completely all over, but I just did it square. And it's going to be clear anyways. And this really thin water slide style decals, they, um, you really don't see that clear at all when it dries. Was satisfying. I'm gonna cut my mat. Oh no! I'm gonna cut the cutting mat. So that's one. Okay. Yeah, got a little bit of a blue edge there. I can fidget with this for a while, but let's move on. So, if you prefer scissors, I bet you you can get away with this doing scissors just fine. But I don't like using scissors because I don't think that the edges are so clean. At least for me. Let's see if I can just prove myself wrong right here on camera that using scissors isn't such a bad idea. Maybe I have gotten better at using scissors in life. That's a skill right there, buddy. I'm using these little tiny... I actually found these for free. Look at there. That's actually pretty clean. Well, what if I go this way? How about that? What's going to happen if I go this way? Is it going to be a bad idea? 
I dare you to leave a comment. Because I want people to comment. I want you guys to say hi. Maybe let me know how you guys do this. What's your preferred method to cutting out decals? Now, to be honest, that wasn't bad. So I think either way is just fine. Maybe the complexity of the shapes, scissors would definitely be the way to go. But I'm going to leave this one even though it's got that lip. And this one actually came out cleaner. So moving along, I will be back to you when it's time to apply them. Moment of truth. So for this part, I have you some warm water in a dish. It doesn't have to be blazing hot. Maybe, let's say hot tub hot, like 100 degrees or so. Maybe not even that far, just like um, body temperature heat. But you want it to be a little bit warm. And, and you know, I've, I've done it when it's a little bit cool and still got decent results. But you're going to want to want these to wipe off, dust off. The area that you're going to be applying the decals, you're also going to take a look at your decals, make sure there's no dust on them. Any dirt, any hair, cat hair, pet hair, whatever it is. Okay, so we got these two, right? So it's going to have to go like this because... See, that should fit pretty good on that edge. Might curl over a little bit because the way I got it shaped. But I just want it to lay kind of flush against the edge. If I put it on the other side, because like I said, they're mirrored symmetrical, it's going to be all crooked. And that means, you know, if it's looking like that, then yeah, you got it wrong. I also want to point out another thing. I did go ahead and correct the paint issues that I had. And I will be putting out a separate video on correcting that the edge of the primer that was still showing in the paint I did correct that um, I think this is about as good as it's gonna get live and learn right so water slide decals how do they work if you've never done it before well you're gonna put it in this water with the blue backing on keep it on Give everything a wipe down that you're about to you know, apply them to. Make sure there's no dust or dirt, anything that might show up through the decal. And then you want to take a good look at the decal itself. Make sure there's no dirt or anything. These are clean. You're going to put these in the water. They're going to curl up slightly. This backing, you're not going to rip it off or anything like that. You don't have to worry about taking it off the backing. These are designed to slide off the back you kind of just pull it off the back and it gets kind of slimy okay they get kind of like a slime almost like snot slick i don't know how else to explain it but that's that's how it works in it and you just put it on and just kind of peel it off so let me just shut up and go ahead and show you put it in and it'll curl up see Give it a couple seconds. And whatever we're touching, we want to make sure that it's wet. Make sure our fingers are wet. Make sure the rocket itself is wet. Where you're applying it is also going to have some water on there. Because we're going to squeegee that off with the paper towels. We're going to dry it off with the paper towels. And it also would probably be a good idea to have you like a Q-tip or something like this to help maybe roll out, roll out some uh, air bubbles if you start getting air bubbles. And just kind of place it down. So I think it has been in there long enough. Just here. You guys can see. Alright, so it kind of uncurled a little bit. I don't know if you notice that. And nice and easy, right? I'm going to kind of push with my thumb that way. And pull it this way, right? It should, see, it's already starting to slide, coming right off. That's what we want. And then we just don't want it to wrinkle up.
So I'm going this way with it this time. I don't want it to rip. They are fragile compared to like vinyl decals. This is kind of pulling right off. Nice and easy, taking our time. I'll wet that Q-tip a little bit, pull it back some. Make sure that we get it lined up. It's gonna curl over that, that shaped edge a little bit. Go back and forth, kind of push it towards this way. working the edges and then we can come back this way not pushing down really 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 hard so that's the kind of just curling over but it's still laying well no I got to look at it from this angle see if you didn't choose to shape your fins give them that edge it might sit better but since I did, so it's going to curl over that a little bit right there. And then we got that barely, barely curling over. But I'm pulling. And of course, I probably should be, like I was just saying, we want to kind of roll it. And I'm not pushing down with all my might. I mean, I'm just, just working it, just taking my time. I think that's actually set really, really good. Let's see if this lot continues. Now what I'm going to do is take this and just start dabbing like this. And then kind of continue to pull away. Looks like it kind of pushed up. I didn't realize that it did. Yep, it's okay. So I literally, it's still wet enough to where I can literally pull it back. I can even probably set my thumb here a little bit and keep pulling. And then as it dries, the stickiness, I guess you could say, kind of takes over and activates. think if it has a yellow backing that's a vinyl decal and it's not a water slide decal but you would have to peel the backing off and then put it in here and you can, should be able to do it the same way you do it with the water trick kind of like a water slide decal boom got that one on there went on pretty good too so let's let these dry for a minute we're going to put the logo on and put the other fin decals on. And then we're going to figure out where to put the Estes logos, which can be anywhere of your choice. And let's attach that nose cone. How about that? Next part. Let's get the logo on there. Now I've got this basically on the opposite side of the launch lugs. Okay. And on the face card itself... It's actually kind of showing it kind of going down like it would sit kind of like that a little bit. But I'm thinking I'm just going to line it up with this fin right here. That's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I'm probably put it right about here. I think that'll be all right. Still going nice and straight. We'll see how if this isn't going to be a complete disaster. So this is the same water. I made sure that this is cleaned off. This water has actually cooled off a little bit. So let's see what kind of results we get. See how it curls up. And make sure that I will start wetting this down. Make sure that I already kind of wiped it off, make sure there was no dust or anything. So make sure our fingers are a little wet. Oh, 
<coughs> Give it a couple seconds. Maybe kind of shake it around a little bit. I don't want to probably handle it too much, but you know. So let's see if I can push and pull with this thumb and push with this thumb. Kind of go this way with it and see if it'll cooperate. See if it'll slide off. Ooh, see, it's curling. It's curling. That's what I didn't want it to do. It's curling right there. Okay, so we pulled off a little bit now. So let's see. Just pulling it right off, kind of holding it with this finger here. Nice and easy, because I don't want it to rip. Take our time, no rush. Don't overthink it. And boom, look at that. See, they went on. Oop, spoke too soon. See, it's still pretty slick. It's like no sticky until it really started drying up. It's just nothing but slide. So when they're called water slide, they ain't kidding. So I wonder if I can just kind of do a little something like this. Just kind of hold it with this finger here. Kind of try to squeegee out some of that water. There's no wrinkles, no air bubbles. It's somewhat satisfying, I'll tell you. Actually, it is satisfying to just go on so clean. I don't hate water slide decals. At least not yet. Some people I know don't they prefer vinyl, the old school style over the water slide. But apparently water slide are actually old school too. They've been around for a while. But I'm telling you, my kits that I've had back in the day, at least I did not know. Maybe I didn't read the directions properly. Impatient child. Impatient adult sometimes. I had no idea about the water slide trick. So this is new to me. And I'm sold. That's for sure. Kind of get in there and take a look. I mean, I don't see any wrinkles, but you know, the water droplets can kind of make you think there's a wrinkle there, just the reflection of the water. I don't think it ripped. I don't think I got it on crooked. I don't think I stretched it out or deformed it any. I think that's that. There's the logo. Now we just kind of let it dry. So we got the other ones on here. That's what we did earlier. Those are the ones that have been on there for a minute. Right there. So getting there. Getting there. I'll go ahead and put, yeah, in decal. And then we'll go ahead and attach this shot cord. 
and I'll show you how I do parachutes. I do it um, with the swivels. I'll show you how that's done. Note. Probably when you're putting your decals on, the order of your decals, you probably want to do this side first, work your way around to the side you're going to put the logo on. And I made a bit of a boo-boo. But I'm not damaging it. And it is dry now, and I have waited a couple minutes since I've been with you. Uh, yeah, see, when I'm putting it on the stand, it's kind of touching that. And it could cause you problems. So make a note of that when you're putting the decals on, the order that you put your decals on. Got this one on, got one more. Now, this is the one that was kind of not so pretty. And make sure that it's all cleaned off. Go ahead and put it in the water. Let it get all curly Q, let it straighten back out. The water is cold now. It's actually cold. And make sure we clean the fin off and wet it up. Let's just see if this is going to be the one that makes or breaks us the way that it was cut. It is sliding. It is sliding. A little bit. At a time. Make sure nothing crinkles over. Not pulling the crap out of it. Just ever so gently. Letting it kind of pull off. And it's like a little bit of a suction to the backing, but it's kind of pulling in the direction of the decal, if that makes sense. That actually, there's like a little dot right there. It looks like that's just an imperfection in the printing. And yeah, you can scratch your decals. Let them sit around too long before you put them on your rocket. Put them under a book. Let them fall on the floor. Dirt and stuff can, you know, scratch them up, deform them, decolor them. So, usually don't want to wait too long. Because the longer you wait, the more likely you're going to damage them. <laughs> Something like that. Put it over to the dry side just a little bit and then I think that's about it really I think we got the decals on this bad boy I think this is pretty much finished except we want to be able to get it back and that's going to be with our recovery we need to attach the nose cone to the shock cord and Put a parachute on here because you don't want this to come back down ballistically, right? Or just too fast. Kind of looking in the shine. See if I see any bumps or recoils. Let that dry and I will get back to you. We'll keep working it. Da, 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 da. We are done.
da 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 except we need to attach that 18 inch parachute to this mm -hmm. definitely don't want to forget this part so the traditional way the way that I used to do it the old school way the way that's probably tried and true all this and that and remember we attached the shock cord to the motor mount if you haven't seen that in the build video I didn't do the old tea bag pouch thing well the old school method the way that everybody probably at least knows at least once when they built rockets back in the day as a kid or they're just getting started doing it you would just tie this to the nose cone you know probably with uh two double knots tie it down and then tie another one cinch it down well we're not going to do that I'm going to do a loop knot and I'm going to utilize snap swivels all right you got different kinds and one thing you'll probably hear me say a couple times on this channel, and this will be one of the first times, is that fishing and boating has a lot to do with rocketry. And this is one of them, because these are fishing swivels. You know, that way you tie one on and change out a hook or a lure quicker. When I haven't actually tied a whole thing back on, you just tie the line to that. So, one of these kind here, as you can see, has these two protrusions in the uh, the wire here. You would push it down and then slip your lure on or your nose cone. Okay. And this one would actually probably, I would want to say would be a little stronger because it's not smooth like this one where it could just maybe the weight of the rocket if you have a really bad ejection where the rocket's going too fast that could probably yank out of there and probably straighten this out and your nose cone and maybe your, your rocket or whatever you're going to lose it so we don't want that but this is actually the one I'm going to use and all that matters and since this is a really big huge giant rocket and it's pretty light all that matters is that it fits over the eye loop there that's all that matters and I think it does so it moves freely I want to give a shout out to Dave Thomas he's a really really good youtuber he's also part of my inspiration of actually getting into YouTube with uh, building rocket videos he has lots and lots of different videos on different builds he even built a high flyer XL that was a good video and um, I actually had the idea of doing swivels one day. I looked it up, and yeah, sure, sure enough, um, in the forums and Facebook, a lot of a lot of uh, rocketeers do use swivels with their rocket setups and their recovery setups. Nice, fresh, brand new, 18-inch parachute. That's what the High Flower XL comes with. Got our shrouds. It's looking good. Let me get this on camera. So this one is attached here, 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 and here, here. Some of them would be, and don't freak out. And you might even prefer it this way or the other way. Some parachutes will come where this would be looped. And then and then you'd have this one looped here to this corner. And then you have this one looped here to this corner. So there's different configurations. So 
first thing you're going to want to do is get them up in your hands like this. You want to spike it. Grab the middle of it and spike it. Okay? You're keeping this tight. Okay? Now what you, the normal traditional way is, you would just take these loops. Of course, this will still be tight. That way that your shroud lines won't be uneven because you want to be as even as possible because otherwise your rocket's going to come down with like really, really bad spin. You put these through and then loop the nose cone through and just basically pull it tight. But I'm going to show you the same way, but with a snap swivel. It's literally the same way. Okay, so we got our, we got our loops even, right? On the shroud lines. We're pulling it tight. We got it spiked at the middle. This right here is looking like they're about as even as, it, as can be. Because you want to make sure that pretty much, <laughs> it's kind of hard to show you. But, no, there you go. As long as pretty much all these line up. Okay, and this, is, and this isn't exactly 100% perfect. It is fresh out of the bag. It's, it's, it's fresh. It's a brand new parachute. But as long as that's lining up, this should be fine. Okay, I think that this is pretty even. So what we're going to do, okay, we're going to take this while this is tight. Right? Keep in tension. even probably give it like a little squeeze kind of give it to a point oh definitely want to also make sure that your swivel is big enough to accommodate your shroud lines it's really not about the strength okay so then oop, look at there Still, it's still fine. It's still fine, even though I'm fidgeting with it a little bit. You can literally just pull the swivel back up through like this. I'm going to spike it and then kind of pull that tight. All right. So now what the beauty of this is, is that let's say if it was a windier day and you don't have the biggest field in the world to, to work with, you can actually switch your parachutes out a lot easier to maybe say, like, let's say a 15 or a 12 inch parachute. This would probably recover just fine on a 12 inch, but it does come with 18. Um, so at this point, let's go ahead and actually tie the nose cone to the rocket. And I'll show you what kind of knot I'm going to use. All right. And this is another kind of swivel here. I see these used more like in salt water. I am a Florida boy, so yeah, I do know a little bit of fishing. I, I've been slacking lately, though, actually getting my line wet. But this one would actually probably be pretty strong, too. Now, if you were to use one of these... You do have to be aware that, yeah, this could probably cause snags. So that's why I do prefer to use the other kind, because it's more smooth, less snags. But I bet, I bet you, I bet you, you could take one of these, once you attach it, how you want to attach it, just probably put a little bit of masking tape on there. It'll probably make that a lot smoother and less snaggable. And it'd be a lot stronger, I'm sure. So, we're going to do a non-slip loop knot. Now, yeah, you can do the good, good old square knot, whatever you want to call them, just a good old overhand knot, you know, where you just literally make a simple loop like that. And Kevlar is apparently notorious for not wanting to keep a, keep a knot. We shall see. I've already tried this knot that I'm about to use on a couple different rockets, and it seems to be working just fine on Elastic 2. 
So what we're going to do, take our tag end, right? Probably give us plenty of tag end because we can always cut it down to size. Or we can even do another little thing. But we're going to make a, a loop knot here, right? Mm -hmm. And then, make sure, put that through there. Then we're going to bring this back through. Okay, that's all, that's all I've done so far. And then I'm going to take this and twist this around about maybe three or four times. Okay, something like that. I still got this, this overhand knot, what do you want to call that? I'm going to pull this back through the tag end. I'm going to cinch it down. Okay. I don't have it super tight right now, so you have to ask yourself, do you like the size of that loop? Now, the reason why I like this is because I like, I don't like a knot just being directly on the eye loop there. So to me, that can just cause like friction or cause issues, or come that might even come undone even more. So, I'm gonna show you another another little thing. Let's say you want a little more insurance, okay? Let's give us an extra long tag in, right? This is just for demonstrational purposes. We're going to do the same thing we just did. Pull it back through, then we're going to loop it three, four times. Pull it back through again. I'm not going to pull it tight, tight. Not yet, because this isn't how my loop's going to want to be. I might, I might have to just get to where I want it. Now, see this tag in. What if something was going to slip? Okay. Well, why don't we make a knot, a regular overhand knot? Something like that. Maybe that'll be fine. Just one or one or two. You can even do it again. And when you got that, let's say that that was going to slip. That tag end was going to go under pressure. Well, that right there would be like a stop because it's not going to go through that right there. So I actually want a smaller loop. I'm going to work at this a minute. And I'll be right back to you. But you see, you get the point. So you, you cinch that down, right? You would cinch this down. And then that would get tight, and this this is it's going to stay at that size, that whatever size loop you want. This is probably not even bad, but I want mine just a little bit smaller. Okay, I think that's how I want mine, and it's not a lot smaller. It's not darn near flush, tiny up against it. That's what that's what I want, something like that. And I could probably even chop this tag end down a little bit. I can even probably put some glue there, but they say don't put uh, glue on especially Kevlar says it's really bad for Kevlar yeah I just pulled this down I was pulling this way pulling this way pulling this way and I'm gonna tell you that's not going anywhere okay I'm pretty confident in this and you know your shot cords gonna want you want your shot cords to be about three times the length of your rocket okay so I did make this shot cord even though there is no elasticity all right, this is not, this is just straight, doink, 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 doink. Like, there's no boing, boing, boing at all. There's no stretch in this. Now, I could have made a hybrid where I did some of this, which this is actually what I'm going to do with my next video, the Star Orbiter. I'm going to take this and kind of use this as a leader, like a fishing leader. Think of that. This is heat resistant, and the gases from the, sh the ejection charge won't burn this or deteriorate this is let's say fast as elastic or rubber bands which I'm very against to the rubber band shot cords that those come with now food for thought while closing this out 
what's let's say you don't want to attach your parachute directly to the nose cone let's say you like you like attaching it here well you could probably make a loop knot right here if you wanted to just a simple like dropper loop or something like that just tie it right there to probably be just fine because it's a smaller rocket right but what if I had cut cut this here and I have two strings now and I had just a regular barrel swivel, not a snap swivel, but a barrel swivel. All right, and I've got three different sizes here. What's to stop me from like, let's say this is the end that attaches to the body and this end goes to the nose cone. Okay, you tie off a piece here, you tie off a piece here, and then, yeah, of course, you're going to have a knot here, but what, what's to stop you from, I might have to give this a try. What's to stop you from attaching it here instead of here? See what I'm saying? It's food for thought. I might have to give that a try on one of my builds. But really, guys, this is it. This is this is it. Getting that tucked back in there. But this is the conclusion of this high flyer build. This is done. Finally. And I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Sticking through it, because I know these videos have been pretty long. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys watching. You know, leave me a comment. Um, cuss at me if you got to. <laughs> you know, if that's the way you feel. But, you know, if it's, if it's, if you guys see me do something that was completely wrong or, um, you know, have an opinion about it, you know, let me know. And then, uh, I'll go for there and I'm going to address it in a future video, you know? Um, but anyways, you know, we've had a couple issues with the paint. The paint is not a 10 out of 10. Okay. You know, the nose cone gave me some issues. You know, I have some, some spirals still, uh, showing, which I probably could have sanded it, then filled in the spirals and then sanded it again to kind of thin these out. I probably could even put more primer on it, a couple more coats of primer, the, the filler primer, it might have filled that in. And, of course, we learned that we need to leave, the, when we do a paint scheme that's like this and the fins are a different color, we need to leave a little lip of color to overlap. That way we don't have to worry about primer, like a really thin um, thing of primer still showing through our paint. You know, this, this, this kit actually does come with an... Uh, an engine hook but you know I, I changed this out for a retainer and I sliced the launch lugs in two I figure that it'll give it longer it would be it'll be a longer uh, a longer time on the rod let's say that it might give it more stability leaving the rod but you know probably one longer tube if, of course, I'm not going to stick a big old fat tube on there like that. Um, of course, when you do this, when you do two, you have the chance of getting them on there crooked and probably snagging on the rod. Um, one thing is even though, yeah, I painted the shoulder. A lot of people kind of shun shun that. Don't, uh, don't recommend that. That thing is super ultra smooth. It's actually too smooth because if I tilt it down like this, or if I just hold it down, it will kind of just slide on its own. So I might have to actually put some tape on there. Because I don't want it that loose. Because when it's, when it's going up, it can probably... The air pressure could actually force it out as it's going up. All the turbulence in the air can actually wiggle it out on the... Believe it or not. So we don't want that... You know, you don't want it going 100 miles an hour. And then, you know, your parachute comes <laughs> flying out. And then you get a zipper. Because... This could happen because especially Kevlar has no stretch to it. You can whoosh, slice the body tube right down the middle. We don't want that. Now you see that I don't, I don't have this in the rocket. I don't like to store. Of course, with the discovery of the awesomeness of using snap swivels, which does add a little weight to the rocket. Not, I mean, not a whole lot. I'm gonna have to actually probably weigh the swivel itself, but. Try not to try not to store these for, at least for a long time, all folded up in the tube because they kind of 
contour together. One way to help with that and also help with ejection and maybe not get stuck anywhere is using uh, talcum powder. You know, however you feel about talcum powder, uh, powder it, it being possibly carcinogenic, well, I'll still be able to buy some on Amazon. Uh, some people say cornstarch, and I know there's some other, I think, um, billiard chalk. You know, you're going to go play some pool. You're going to go that round white thing that <laughs> that's usually on the, on the side of the wall there next to the pool tables at your sports bar or wherever. Yeah, you wipe your hands off with that. That really helps it slide. Well, that can also work for these I hear. But you know, I'm, I'm going to start using talcum powder, I think. And hopefully I don't uh, I don't grow extra toes. But this is this is done. This is it. And shout out to Dar Dave Thomas of Rear. He's got a great channel. I might put a link down below just, just as a thank you to his good videos and... Um, there's also lots of other channels out there that do really, really great videos uh, on building. Um, the Rocketry Forum, people out there, um, the Facebook groups, Estes Facebook groups, Model Rocketry groups. There's there's so many and a lot of knowledgeable people on there. <sighs> so one day when I grow up, I'm actually going to fly this thing. I was hoping to have flying footage of this already for you guys as an ending to this video. But I want to go ahead and get it put out. So I will get this flown here soon, get some footage of that. And we'll see if everything I've been talking about, I, if I'm full of poopy dookie, <laughs> dookie poopoo or not, all right? But that's it. I'm Rob with half Aft Rocketry. And I'm signing off. And I hope you guys have a bunch of great flights and a good time. <laughs> good night.